welcome back to my channel. So today, um, I just got some plants through the mail. I did a separate unboxing video on, on that. So if you would like to see that, I'll link that video for you. But um, two of the, the plants did come bare root. So I have to pop them up. And I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to come and do a video because I've had a lot of questions, whether you know on Instagram or in my Facebook group from beginner, um plant parents who aren't quite sure how to go about potting up their uh either new plants or plants that need um a bigger pot or if they just wanted to have a new pot so i'm going to show you all of that i'm going to focus the camera in here so you can see what i'm doing and then i'll just um talk through it so one of the main questions about repotting i find well two main questions what um what type of soil uh, mix or, or kind should be used and then also i get the question of um when should you um repot so first things first as i get this here the, the the two that i'm going to be potting up are succulents so they need a very dry and coarse mix so i have here just some potting soil i believe the brand no the brand was scott's um it's a potting mix that i got a while back um from ollie's they had a big they had a big sale on the gardening stuff so i did get that these are two little um these are little succulents like little two inches so i don't need a whole lot of soil but as you can see for this soil right here it already ha has um the what do you call it it already has a little bark in it and um some perlite so it's already set up to have you know some drainage in there but i always like to add extra perlite to my mix um especially when it's for a cactus and i have this orchid bark here guys play nice i have this orchid bark here which I just add a little in there. I pretty much use this for all of my plants. It is it's done, it does well for me. So once you have all those ingredients in there, you just wanna go ahead and give it a little stir. I don't use any exact ratios. Um, I know I go heavy on the perlite and then I put in the burp um, and I mix it up. I like it to look like chunky and, and airy. And then that's what I use. So you can see right here, nice and light. And it has a little chunks, the chunks of the orca bark in there. So this is my go-to mix. So now um, that I have all of that mixed up and I like the way it's looking, I don't think it needs any more um, perlite or anything. You're gonna go for um, the pot that you're gonna use. This one already has some dirt in here cause I started. And like I said, I decided to hop on here and do this this video um so you want to take choose your pot now it's a couple things to be said uh about pot size number one you don't want to go too big on the pot size for the plant because then you can end up over watering and rotting your roots so you don't want to do that these are small plants as you can see um the roots on this one this is a two inch two let me see yep this is a, a two inch terracotta so that'll be perfect for this one and um yeah you just want to make sure this has a drainage hole in it um majority of the time you always want to get pots with a drainage hole just put it like that so you want to the two things are pot size make sure your pot is not too big for your plant that's number one and then you want to make sure that you have um you have some drainage um, to help with not having the plant over water. Terracotta is always good. Succulents like to be dry anyway, um, but I like the look of terracotta, so I put a lot of things in terracotta that maybe typically other people wouldn't. It just means that you would have to water more. Like I have some calathea that are in terracotta and I just water them more often, but they're doing fine. The reason why this is a good one to help if you're a person who tends to sometimes over water is because the terracotta is very absorbent and so it's gonna wick away that moisture for you. Um, what else about that? 
so that's if you're um, potting a plant. Like this would be considered potting because this plant is not in a pot. It doesn't have any dirt, it's just roots, right? If you were repotting, so for example, with this one, which is already um, in a pot, I would consider this one a repotting because I'm gonna take it out of here and I have this cute little mug thing here that I wanna put some into. So when you're repotting, you wanna make sure if you are going up to a bigger pot, you only wanna go up by two inch increments. So if I was gonna repot this whole thing, right? This is a two inch pot. If I was gonna repot this whole thing, cause I just feel like, you know, it, out, it outgrew it or whatever like that. Um, I would go up to no bigger than a four inch pot. And with this, I wouldn't even put, this is a four inch pot right here. I wouldn't even put this in a four inch pot because, um, you know, that would be, that would be too big. So you wanna just be mindful, just go up by like an inch, a max, if it's really overgrown the pot that it's in, like if you can see roots coming out the bottom and stuff, max you wanna go each time you repot is two inches. Same thing because you don't wanna overwhelm the plant. Too much soil means too much moisture and it's just gonna end up with rotted roots. So that's that part. Now as far as drainage, this is, um, I don't know what this was technically even for, but my husband got these for me um, from Dollar General. Actually, it was a pack of five, and he just thought they looked cool, and I could do a plant project with them. So they don't have a hole in the bottom. The reason I'm still going to use this is because I am putting a succulent in it, which is rarely going to get watered, and I feel comfortable that I can lightly water it, you know, just enough that it needs and not overwater it. But if you're a person that does not feel comfortable with that, they always put get pots with drainage. You can buy um, just with any household handheld drill. I have like a black and decker one. You can buy the drill bit to drill your own holes. There are, I've put holes in with just a hammer and um, a screwdriver while running the water over the pot. Um, it's different ways that you can get your own holes in there, but it's just best to err on the side of caution and have a hole. But like I said, this is gonna be a succulent, which is only gonna get watered maybe like once a month. So it'll be fine, I feel like. All right, so that's basically everything you want to have in mind when you go to pot up your plants. And then the next thing you want to do, um, some people put like a piece of um, like old dryer sheet or mesh over the bottom of the hole so that the water is still able to come out but the sand, the soil doesn't roll out. I don't do that because I don't have anything like that, so I just don't do it. Um, so yeah, so first thing you want to do is put a little bit at the bottom. You don't wanna put the plant right in cause then your roots will be, you know, right at the bottom of the pot. So you wanna put about, you know, just a little bit um, of a layer. I put about like this high in the bottom of the pot, uh, you know, just enough to cover that. Then you wanna take your plant. So this one is the Buddha temple plant that I said, like I said, I just got today. So I'm gonna put that in there. And then you wanna place it in and look where your, your, your plant is going to land. Now for me, this will be too low because you can see almost an inch of the plant will be down in the pot. You want your plant to be up here above the soil line. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add some more because I know I want it to be lifted up higher. Like that, let's try that again. That looks pretty good. I'll put a little more. And then what you wanna do is take your finger and make a space in there where you can nestle in the plant like that. I like to center it. Then you just wanna do what they call back filling. And then you wanna add more soil around the top to fill in the rest of the space. I don't, um, I don't feel like I repot my plants very often, but when I do repot them, it's usually because um, it's time for them to go a size up. Like if I don't want, I don't particularly um, like the plants to be in the nursery pot if I can stand it. Sometimes you can't, so they just have to stay in there for a while. So um, I'll usually repot like a week after I get them because you don't want to repot, that's another thing. In terms of when to repot, you don't want to repot like you get it, bring it home, and repot it right away. Technically, you can do that, but I wouldn't advise it because the plants go through shock. 
So you have to think about it. They're going from wherever, whatever store, if it's a greenhouse, they're going from those conditions. If it's a big box store, they're going from those conditions. And then they're coming into your home, which is a completely different place. So they have to adjust um, and you know acclimate to your space. So you wanna give them time to do that so they can go through that initial shock. You may lose a leaf or two, you may have a little yellowing. You wanna let all that happen first. And then you wanna go in and then if you want to, you know, repot it and things like that. Same thing with watering. A lot of times when you bring them home, especially big box stores, they're already wet, sometimes too wet. Even some of the local growers or the smaller, um, the smaller places, I've noticed that they can come, um, they sometimes can be overly watered. So you don't even want to water right away when you get it. Um, this one, like I said, it's a succulent, so it doesn't need the water anyway. She shipped it, shipped it bare root. And so since I'm um, repotting it, I'm gonna drizzle it with a little bit of water. But say if this was like fresh from store, in soil, wet, all that, I wouldn't do any of that. So you wanna let it sit for at least a week. I usually let mine sit for at least a week because you wanna keep them separate from your plants that you already have as well. Because even though sometimes you can't visibly see pests, they can be there. So you just wanna make sure that you keep them separate from all your other plants, isolated, and then so they can get settled and get relaxed. And then that's when you can then go in and, you know, do your repotting if that's what you want to do and what have you. So that's on that. So now um, I have this here. You want to give it a little tap like that so everything can settle. Give it a little push like that around to stabilize it. Um, this soil with all the bark and, um, perlite it has in it is very chunky so I don't find that it, it gets compact but if you had the soil just this you were just using you know whatever you had just the straight up soil out the bag don't push down too much because the soil can get um compact very easily so I just like to give it a top make sure a tap on the top make sure it's sturdy and then there you have that one now you can see it has a little wobble to it because it's all in there dry um so once I give it a little water the roots are gonna, you know, soak that up and then they're gonna start to settle into the soil. So here is that one, let's put that over here. And now the next one I'll do, I'm trying to think if I have another pot, which I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting these two to come bare root. I wasn't expecting that. So let me see what I can do. Is this gonna fit in here? Oh yeah, that'll be really cute. Okay, so now this one has some soil on it here, as you can see. When plants are shipped bare root, sometimes they'll have soil, sometimes they won't. I like to, let me put it over here so you can see. You're gonna take the, oh actually, we can see how this is um, just naturally coming apart. A lot of times when you have a plant in a pot, they'll take like separate cuttings. Like you see, you can see this one piece. They'll take separate pieces and put them together into the pot to make a full pot. So this is a time also where if you want to separate it and have more than one, you can do that. So you just want to gently do like I'm doing right here. Take your hands like this and just get that dirt off. So now I have this piece right here. These, this little bunch of pieces. Um, and the same thing with this. And I do this because I like to have my own soil on there. And so I just do it. Although sometimes there have been a few times where I've gotten plants where I liked the soil mixture that was used. It was a really good mix. And so I left it on there, you know, because I felt like it was good soil. No need to waste the soil if you feel like it's good soil. This soil has a little bit of perlite in it, but not much. So you have that right there. You want to be gentle with the roots, especially you can see these roots are like hairs, basically. So take your old soil out of the way I have my little cup here and then I'm gonna go ahead and start to pop that up for you so again I'm gonna take my mix grab a little handful to put at the bottom build it up a little bit and then I'm gonna take my plant and check the level you won't don't want the plant to be too low down in the pot. So I'm gonna add a little more, so I want it to be higher. All right, and then I'm gonna backfill. This will make a bunch less mess 
<laughs> if I had like a scoop or something, but I don't. I just use my hands, so it can get a little messy. Sometimes the orchid chips are big. I just break them and like move them to the side if I feel like a piece is too big for the plant that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead, put that in there. Give it a little press down, like I said. Um, the roots, as they, you know, absorb up their water, they're gonna reach down in there and spread out on their own. So don't worry if you feel like the roots are like too balled up or anything, they're fine. They know, they know what to do. So here is this one. I think that's really cute. These are new plants, so they're still a little asleep. Um, they came, you know, came out the box, so you gotta give them a chance to wake up. And so here is that one. So we put that one over there. Now I have another piece of that same plant there. And I'm trying to think what I have to put it in. And I am not sure. So I'll set these to the side for right now. Um, Cause I may, it's okay to leave them in the nursery pot. Um, as long as you know there's no visible roots coming out the bottom there I think it's just a matter of preference these don't look so bad um, and they're small so for right now I probably will leave them in there because I don't have any more um, like cool little containers that I want to use so for right now I'll just leave them in there but like I said you can see here the ratio of the plant to the pot you just want to keep that um keep that very close all right so i'm gonna put that to the side and i do have one other plant that i was gonna repot which will be perfect for this let me go this is the sable palm i picked this up a while back from walmart um the pot that it came in wasn't too bad looking um so i left it for a while however plastic pots are not my favorite and so i am going to repot this guy or this would be an example of repotting um the other two were examples of potting because they didn't they went from not having a pot to going into the pot um potting versus repotting was just it's pretty much the same pretty much but some slight differences so let me get this out of here which is gonna be a hassle this pot i don't want to break it but it has like these clips inside that's holding the actual pot in there and i don't know why they did that because oh ow i scratched myself wow, it's scratching too. <laughs> you think it's funny okay i don't know why they did that like that so i'm not gonna fight with it i wanted to show you but inside this gray plastic is a let me get one of these boxes so I can put the old dirt in. You want to have something to put their old dirt in too. But inside this gray plastic pot right here is the, the black nursery pot that has the holes in it. You can see that. But it has like these ridges around the side and it's stuck and then I can't get it out. So that'll go there and I'm going to be putting it in to this terracotta pot. So first things first. I'm always anxious when I do the repots from certain like of the big stores because bugs, but what can you do? So be careful with this plant, first of all, because the leaves are very spiky and they do hurt. So I'm holding it by, by the trunk and I'm just loosening up the old soil. You wanna be gentle. You don't wanna, unless you have like some bad infested soil or something, then you would have to clear the roots completely this soil is, is nice and chunky, I can see, and it looks fine. I just wanted to change the pot. So I'm just gonna gently, you can see that right there. I'm gently loosening up the leaf, the roots at the bottom and letting some of that um, other soil out. And this will encourage the roots to spread out and fill in, which they'll do anyway, but I just separated it a little bit because I like to get a lot of fresh soil in there now you don't want to be too rough with the roots sometimes the plants don't like having their roots disturbed so you just want to make sure that you're very 
gentle with this portion. And okay, I think that's good. So, as you can see right there, I have some loosened up, loosened up the root ball. The roots are nice and healthy. You can see that they're nice and firm. Uh, oh, that's a weird looking root. Oh, I wonder what that is. Okay, oh, see, I just snapped off a piece of root. So you have to be careful, but um, <clears throat> the roots are nice and healthy. When you're repotting too, this is a time to give it a check and make sure you don't have any rotting going on. I can do a separate video on what that would look like and um, what signs to look for for that. But when you're repotting, that's a good time to look. And this has like a, I don't know if you can see that, it has a really hard, like thick root right there in the middle. And then these are like the little, the roots that like spin off. So that's cool. I like repotting too, because I like to see how the roots look. So take your oil, soil, I use whatever I have on hand, I have that box. So I'm gonna sit this right here for a moment so we can talk about pots. This is a terracotta pot. Now, a lot of people will ask, what is that stuff around the pot? Is my pot molding? What's going on? Do I need to throw it away? What do I need to do? This is mineral deposits. I live in New York State. I'm in Buffalo, New York to be exact. We have hard water. And um, terracotta pots are very porous in nature. They absorb, um, as they absorb and wick the water away from the soil, they absorb those minerals and they end up deposited on the outside of the pot as it dries. Now, I like the look of it. Um, you know, there are places where you can go, they call it the patina on the plant. I mean, excuse me, on the pot, there are places you can go to buy the pot um, with that on there and it's actually kind of pricey. Some people do like a treatment with paint on the outside to make it look that way. I just like to keep watering and let it happen natural. I've had this pot probably for at least a year or so. So that's what that is. It's nothing to be alarmed about. If you don't like how it looks, you can clean it um, with, I think they said some lemon juice or with some diluted um, rubbing alcohol and you could just wipe it down and it'll come off. Um, I don't, I haven't tried it because of course I don't do it. So as I said, cause I like the look of it. So you have the pot. This had another plant in there. Um, it was a cutting I put in here and once again, excuse me, once again, knowing the size of your plant for your pot, the cutting I put in here was way too, um, small for the size of this pot. And so it ended up over watered even in the terracotta. And so that I lost that cutting. So I have this plant planter and I wanted to use it. So what you first want to do is clean all the dirt out of it, which I did the previous dirt. Um, some people reuse dirt. That's a whole other long conversation. Um, sometimes I do, most times I don't. I really don't when a plant like that cutting I had rotted inside of there because all of that matter and everything from that rotted plant is in the soil. So now that you have all the dirt out of the pot, you want to sanitize the pot. You always want to sanitize the pot because you don't want any potential pests or fungus or anything that could have been present on your other plant to be present on this plant. So how I cleaned it was I took um, some dish soap and water, uh, scrubbed it down, and then I rinsed it out. And then I have like a, um, a disinfectant spray, no particular one. I just sprayed it down, rinsed it, and then I let it sit. And that was a couple days ago, so now I'm using it. You don't have to let it sit for any amount of time, but you do want to make sure that you disinfect the pot um, so it's ready for the fresh plant. Okay, so this has a drainage hole as well. So you're gonna take your plant, I mix up some more soil because I knew I would need more, and you wanna do the same thing. You wanna test it out. And actually, this pot could have been a little bit bigger because this is gonna like fit perfectly. So I'm gonna end up repotting it, but it's okay for this. Cause so some plants like they're okay with being um, a little root bound. And so this one is one of those plants. So I have it in here and then I'm gonna go ahead and backfill, which is just a fancy way of saying, once you get the plant situated in the pot, filling around it with more soil. When you're potting, this plant naturally has a um, like an off center shape to it. So I'm trying to lean it back the other way as I pot it to make it more centered. 
but when you're putting the plant in the pot, this is where you want to make sure you have it positioned how you want it. And then fill the soil and then use the soil to hold it in place. So right here, I'm making a big mess. The soil, <clears throat> once it's water, it will eventually settle. This is another plant that doesn't need a lot of water. The root ball had a pretty good amount of moisture still in it, so I'm not gonna water this one right away, like I'm gonna do the other ones that were completely dry. But as you water them, the soil will settle. You wanna give yourself a little bit of a space between the soil and the top line of the pot because you don't want every time you water it for the water to just run off. So give it a tap. So you'll see, this is a good amount of soil in here. Next time it's time to water and as it gets water, I'll pay attention, watered, I'll pay attention and see if I feel like it needs any more. So go ahead and give it a push down. And then there you have that one. You take a look there. I've centered it. Um, more than it was but like i said it's gonna pretty much just be um it's gonna pretty much just be what it is as far as the shape so you have that and then if you have any soil left over the way which i do right here i would recommend getting a plastic container like a tote or a tupperware or something a big one that you could keep the soil in with a top on it um so it keeps it from getting any um, bugs in it or anything from your other place, especially if you're gonna keep it outside, you don't want it to get wet. Or you can dump it back into the bag. I don't, the only thing I've soil, I've seen come in a resealable bag is the orchid bark and that's not even soil. So I have a big plastic container down here. I have a cute little potting table coming, so it has shelves on it. So I'll be able to give it like a nicer setup and get some containers on it so that I can have it yeah, put together nicely because I don't like having bags of soil like stuck in the closet or in the corner or whatever. So that was how a uh, how to, I guess, explaining how to pot up plants. I know for some people, um, you know, they already know this and that's fine. This is intended for people like those who, you know, I speak to in my Facebook group and on, on Instagram and they're wanting to know exactly how to do it so that they don't harm the plant. Now, a couple things to note, um, just as a quick, see if you can see me here. A couple things to note about when you're repotting, what you want to look out for. I just want to say it again. Don't go too big on the pot. If you are repotting from a smaller pot and you feel like it's time for a bigger one, no more than two inches bigger. Um, than the plant and if you're not really sure just go about like an inch bigger So if you have a two and a half inch pot go to like a three and a half inch pot You know what I'm saying because you don't want to go too big because you don't want to risk over watering and um, Rotting the roots of your plant second of all your soil mixture. I mix what you saw those are three different things I mix potting soil orchid bark and extra perlite if you want a one-stop and go soil I would say to use um, a blend that's intended for um, plants to, that don't like a lot of moisture. The soil mix, if you don't want to do how I did and mix the three different ones together, I would say to pick a soil, um, a fast draining soil, one that has, you know, the perlite in it and stuff like that. Um, they have a mix that specifically, it says it's for like cactus and palms and stuff like that. Unless you have a super thirsty, like water loving plant, I would say you can use that on all of your plants just to help you um, with not overwatering. If you have um, a plant like um, a prayer plant or a calathea or um, something like that or like ferns that like extra moisture, then I wouldn't use that type of soil because you're going to end up watering so much more because they're going to dry out so, so much, much more quickly. So this general rule are for like all your other plants that are not like super thirsty moisture loving plants um so you can use that it's not very expensive to get the separate things like i only use the mix of three um so it's, it's not it's not too bad but like i said if you want to stick to one make sure you get a soil um that will aid that says uh fast draining and um let's see what else 
oh, when you're pu actually putting the plant in uh, into the pot, you want to make sure that you put enough soil in the bottom to lift your plant up. Like you see in here, you want it to be up at the top level. This plant right here is different because this is not meant to be in the soil. This is meant to be above. So this one's up a little higher, but you want to pay attention to the soil line of your plant. So for example, this one, the, the bottom of the plant starts right here. It's not down in there. You want your actual plant, your actual foliage to be up here, which leaves only your roots down into the pot. And then drainage, make sure um, you have drainage holes um, because that just makes it even easier for you to make sure that you don't overwater your plants. And it's really just best if you can't avoid not having drainage holes. If you have a plastic pot, you can heat up like um, a pen or nail or something and stick holes in it. And then if you have a, t a terracotta or a ceramic pot, you can get the drill bit that goes into any household drill and put a hole. But put, I would say just put in drainage holes. Some people feel like you can put layers of like rock or whatever at the bottom to create like a level of drainage. I would just say make it easier on yourself and just get a pot with drainage in it. And if you have a pot like um, this nursery pot that uh, that the plant comes in and you change it to something else, normally I keep these outside part pots because if I get another plant that needs a new pot and I don't have one um, that has drainage, you can always keep your plant in the nursery pot that has the holes at the bottom and put it inside the more decorative one. And then that way, yes? Okay, I see. And that way when you water it, um, you can just lift it out, dump out the extra water and put it back in there. So I think that's pretty much covers everything on, um, okay, for a beginner, how to repot. <laughs> As you can see, the kids are coming to take over. so. I'm gonna head out. Let me know uh, in the comments if you have any more questions about um, potting, if there's anything that I didn't cover. I tried to be like very specific so you would know like exactly what to do and expect. It's a pretty simple process once you know like the basics and you know it's nothing to kind of be intimidated by. But let me know if you have any new plants that you're potting up and also what other videos would you like to see? This is gonna be like a plants 101 type of a ongoing ser series where I will come do like step-by-step -step processes on plants. The next one coming up, I think that I will do is um, either lighting or, yeah, I think lighting. So let me know in the comments what else you would like to see and thank you for watching. Bye guys.